Hello dear students, um, I greet you all and I welcome you to I think our first pre-recorded uh, lecture. And this pre-recorded lecture is going to focus specifically at uh, using ICT in the teaching and learning process. In our last session, um, you, you particularly requested that you want to know how to use the slide presentation especially considering that your ICT students you need to know how to use this ICT. So I said let me first start by introducing you to ICT in the teaching and learning process because we must have um, a guiding, some guiding principles, some understanding of how we can use these technologies, when we, shall, when we can use them and why we should use them. So I'm going to start briefly by uh, talking about communication because the, the essential um, principle, one of the first most essential principles we want to understand is that our objective as teachers is to communicate, to communicate and to allow communication between us and our students. So once we understand what communication is, then we understand how we can then integrate how we can then use technology or what technologies are available so that we can we can choose the appropriate technology in our final discussion okay so first and foremost uh, what is communication so there are many definitions um, i will put up some articles for you to look to to go through to understand what communication is but the basic essence of communication is that you're trying to convey your thoughts, your ideas, and even especially um, particular information. Now you may ask, um, why use all those words? If, when I first started teaching, uh, ICT, in, uh, ICT teaching methods and specifically for my master's educational technology. I first of all had to go and read about it. So I read about it. So what I was doing was gaining information. That's what I was doing. Uh, but as I was reading about it, I also developed my feelings and thoughts and ideas about it. So when I start teaching, I'm not just regurgitating information and handing it over to my students but i'm also conveying my feelings about something likewise you're also going to gain some kind of you yes you're receiving certain information but you will also develop your own thoughts about it you will try to match this information to your previous understanding your previous experience and your thoughts and ideas will develop out of it now as we convey this information we do this using uh, we, we, the, the information as we communicate there are several things that are involved first is speech so for example now i'm speaking i'm using my voice my vocal cords my mind and, and giving you information two we can also do that using visuals so you also you can see me now i am using powerpoint now which allows me to mark certain bits bits of text and i can even make circles and and cross them out and and you see everything that i'm doing as i speak i'm using visuals at this point there are also signals that we may use for example as I speak now, you see my hand movements, you may see my expressions, the lighting may not be so good, but probably if the lighting was good enough, you'd be able to see my expressions as well. Writing, this bit of text I wrote on, on PowerPoint. Behavior, um, you may be able to see if I am angry or if I am, you know, if I'm like this, you know that also maybe uh, the lecturer is not so okay, she's a bit weak, and, you know, things like that. So everything that we do is part of communication we realize it's a package now ict can help us 
can really, really help us bring this package forward to our students very effectively. Why? I may be communicating to you now, then maybe my phone rings. That automatically will disrupt my teaching. I will maybe stop to pick up the call or put it down. Then I may stop the recording and say, let me repeat this so that I don't have any disruption as I speak to my students. So that is essentially uh, communication. And I've just given you also an example of how we can use ICT to best communicate what we are trying to say. Now, uh, communication also, um, communication itself has components. Yeah. Again, the literature I'll give you will, will, will pinpoint, uh, will say, will give you well, different authors will have different elements. But essentially, what we have here on this slide are the, are the core, what we, shall, we can find in every bit of communication. So first is that there's a sender. So the sender is the one who is conveying the information. Now, you may assume, you may take it right now, I am a sender because I am the one with, the, with something to communicate. But after you view this video and you want to give feedback, you become the sender. So the position of sender and receiver is, is constantly uh, changing. The people are changing, uh, 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 playing uh, 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 will, will play the same part as communication is going on. So the receiver is the one receiving the information. Again, the receiver can interchange. Right now, I'm the sender, you'll be the receiver, but you may want to communicate something back to me, then I become the receiver. There is the message, the content. For example, right now, I'm developing content to send to you. Remember we had talked about when we had earlier said I may read information, I myself will develop some thoughts over uh, what I'm trying to teach and ideas. That means as I'm communicating, my perception is part and parcel of my communication. If I didn't have a perception about it, I, would, I don't think I would even be doing it because simply I'd be regurgitating and unless I'm a very good crammer, my feeling must come through. Likewise, when you communicate, you also communicate a feeling. For example, when you say, I don't understand, I am confused, you're actually communicating your perception. So the perception, becomes, and it is important that I also get that perception. Because if I don't, then I will not answer your need. Okay? I will not answer your need. We have then the context. Context, the term context. I remember when I look at this term context, I, I think of my research that I did uh, where I was looking at the rural context and using mobile phones in healthcare in the rural context. And I had to define context. I had to, myself, I had to understand it and, and define it. So what is the context? So it's basically the context is the area in which you're working, the area in which you're communicating. The surrounding, the surrounding. So it could be the, the physical surrounding. Like for example, right, right now I'm in a physical room. I am seated on a chair. Um, there's a, there is, a, we have the, the, the environment outside. There are birds outside chirping. The, because we are in, I'm in a, a homestead where the, there is a farm, a tractor may pass by. Um, are there other activities going on? That is the context. You too who is listening, there's a context in which you're going to listen to this lecture. You, you, may, you may be at home. You may be at your, your, in your home with your father and mother. Some of you, I think, I, I don't know if um, there was a brother amongst you. I, I think I saw from some of the communications. There may be a religious brother. He... He may be in, 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 a, in a specific place, a religious setting, maybe it's a convent or whatever it is. Some of you may be married, you may be in your marital home, your child is there, your husband is here. All that is a context. Okay? And it affects how we communicate. 
Now I gave you the example that maybe for me I am here in a context with, where we also have farming activities going on. A tractor may pass by and make quite a bit of noise and I'll say, okay, let me first stop this recording. Let me redo this particular part because the tractor that was passing by has affected my communication, has affected my speech. There you see how ICT really supports. It really comes in to enhance. You may be in a physical classroom and you're trying to communicate something, but somebody is slashing the compound. Yeah, if any of you has been at Umu, you've I think you've experienced that there are times when the people, the compound people just decide to slash the compound while a lecture is going on. That affects communication. Okay. The second last uh, component or element of communication is the channel, the channel of communication. So this is where I sit. It could the channel of communication may be a physical classroom, we may be seated together. We have used Zoom. That is a channel of communication. This pre-recorded lecture becomes a channel of communication, which I'm going to place in YouTube and then link it to Moodle. All these are channels. See, ICT is playing its part. Yeah. Then we have feedback. Okay. So at the end of this lecture, I'm going to put up a discussion forum on Moodle, and I want your feedback on the content that we have learned. We are using ICT. I could also alternatively say, okay, I'm going to post something on WhatsApp. You can also use that. It's also a possibility. Yeah. So all of these are technologies that we are using. We are using to communicate. Now, types of communication. We have four types of communication. And in all of them, we can use ICT to enhance that communication. The first is interpersonal or one-on-one -on -one communication. So this essentially is when you have two people communicating together. We've done this before on WhatsApp. We've done this on voice calls together. We've done this on email. That is typically one-on-one -on -one communication. Now, normally, one-on-one -on -one communication supplements in teaching and learning. It supplements um, other forms. Maybe we've had a lecture and maybe somebody has not understood and the person says, okay, let me come back to the lecture directly and talk about um, what was discussed. I haven't understood what was discussed. So that is essentially, uh, it's, that person is, is trying to persuade me, oh, I didn't understand this, but it wasn't clear. And then I may in turn will say to assert and say, okay, this is what I meant. And you could understand it also in this other way, just to make myself clear. So one-on-one -on -one can also be used to resolve conflict. Now, in my mind, this is my thinking. There's, there's resolving conflicts at different levels. We may have a disagreement, or whatever it is. Um, I'll, I'll just give you an example. Um, we, I, have, I, I teach a research methods class, and it's quite big because they combined IT students from main campus in main campus in Kozi, Masaka, Ruwaga. All this is about fifty is about fifty seven students that I have in one class. Um, now, these students, when I when we talked about creation of groups, I was thinking, oh, at first I was thinking, let me auto create them so that they are just scattered. And at first, within class, they didn't those who were opposed to it didn't didn't say anything but afterwards some some came back to me individually and said no madam we think this it may not be a good idea for you to auto create because we are from different campuses and if it comes time to meet to meet up it, to to to, res to resolve our uh, our discussions it's going to be a challenge that was a situation where one on one people came and decided to resolve something that was going to be a challenge. So that was one-on-one -on -one communication uh, that was going on. So they did this on WhatsApp, actually. We discussed this on WhatsApp. They expressed their point. I understood it. And we say, I said, okay, 
formulate your groups and let me know, then I'll put them up in Moodle. So that is a typical example. Second type of communication is group, where we have group discussions. So these we've had them, I'm sure you've had, you had them when you were doing your assignment. It was a group assignment uh, where you might have a social group chat. Now we already have a group chat as teachers in ICT. You added me to this group and we've had discussions on it. You can have discussions on that. Platforms like Moodle, Google Classroom also provide the same technology which can be used. So you realize if you had a group discussion, you can actually use those platforms. I'm going to put up a discussion forum that will allow us to discuss issues regarding this video. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Online. So that is typically using group discussion. And you realize that you can, you can use this in your context of teaching as well. The third is public communication. So public communication is typically when one person speaks and many listen. Typically when we have our lectures, uh, especially on Zoom, even now I may, we may not receive the, I may be doing this asynchronous as opposed to synchronous. Synchronous is um, meaning that it is that type of commu technology communication is where, where, where the information is, is getting to us in real time. Right now, what I'm doing, information will not get you in real time. I'll record, put up, then at your own time, you go online, download, and listen to it when you're free. <clears throat> but still, it's public because it's one person speaking to many people. Typically, we've seen this in uh, if you go to church or in a mosque or whatever it is, the person giving the sermon or the homily is speaking to many people. Same thing with maybe some imam who is speaking. These are typically public communications. And we can see that we can do it also using technology. We've done it using Zoom. You, I've done, I'm doing it now in a pre-recorded lecture. And I'm using PowerPoint. PowerPoint, a technology we all have. There's nothing, no extra uh, technology I've added here. I'm simply using PowerPoint to do this. We have interpretive. The final one is interpretive. Now, when we talk about interpretive, let me first make a clarification because sometimes when we think of interpretive, we, 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 may, um, we may miss, we, we, we may assume we're talking about translation. What do, what do I mean by interpretive and, and the difference between interpretive and translation? I'm sure you've all seen scenarios of especially of pastors uh, preaching to a group of people the pastor may be speaking in English, in English and then there is somebody translating what he is saying into the language the, the audience best understands. Yeah, That is translation going on. It's not interpretation. Interpretation is when you're given a text, uh, an audio, whatever it is. And if you, for example, if, if any of you has done literature, I did literature for my level, where you could get a poem or you could have uh, some literature writing, maybe somebody like Shakespeare. I remember we did Macbeth, if I remember correctly. I remember we did Macbeth. So if you have any of you has ever read any of Shakespeare's works, eh, it's very complex writing. And just reading it firsthand, you will not get what the person means. You need to think about what this person is saying and then make meaning out of it. What was this person trying to say? That's what literal, literal writers, uh, those in literature, that's what they essentially they do. They will say something, but it's the, the, the meaning behind it, somebody has to take some time to think about it. That is interpreting. That is the interpretive part coming in, trying to make meaning out of something. Now you may say we are ICT people. This is not relevant at all. It is relevant. Remember, we talked about problem-based learning. Yeah, Pro the problem-based method of teaching and learning. That is a typical example. Say you have an audio file or even a text explaining uh, some challenges a certain organization is going through regarding 
uh, their information, how it is kept, how it is manipulated, how it is supposed to be shared, things like that. You give it, the, the, just simple people within that organization talking about the challenges that they have. Then you, you'd hand this written text, whether it is audio, whether it's written or audio, you hand it over to um, to your students and then the students go back and they have to make meaning out of it in terms of ICT, where they have to think of a solution for this particular organization. So even the, the interpretive communication type is also very applicable for ICT. Now, we have looked at communication, what it is. We have looked at types of communication and throughout I've tried to give examples where ICT is, is, is applicable, but we have not seen what types of ICT technologies are available. Now, I'm going to use the generic term, but within it there, there, there are specific technologies. So one, one type of technologies that, uh, technology that we have is uh, audio, is audio. We have audio uh, files. Now, all of you, I know being students, I'm sure you have, many of you must have uh, songs on your phones. I'm sure all of you have mobile phones, all of you are on WhatsApp. So I'm sure you have some, many of you have some, uh, some, some, uh, some songs maybe on um, uh, what singers do I know, what singers do my nieces and nephews listen to, uh, Banner Boy, yeah? That's one example, Wiz Kid, and those the, the the popular ones, Daddy Andre. I'm sure most of you have those songs on your phone. Those that is those are, are referred to as MP3 files. Those are MP3 files. Now, aside from music, it's possible to have an MP3 file which is simply recorded for students to listen to. Okay. I gave you the example just in the previous slide. Um, let us say you have a, a recording of uh, people from a certain organization talking about challenges they have with their information and, and how they, they, they desire that somebody, that somebody can come up with an ICT solution. That can be made using, uh, using MP3. You, the lecturer, you, the teacher, it's possible for you to use platforms like uh, podcasts. Uh, podcasts are, it's a resource on internet, it's an, an internet resource uh, that can be used, that can, that can be used to create audio files and people listen to them. Now, I have seen this particular technology used especially by those in the creative industry, those celebrities and, and models and so people who, the people who live in the reality they call it, uh, if you've seen people like the Kim Kardashian, those reality stars, they use this resource, but also also teachers use them. Teachers use this, this resource extensively. Now, when should we use audio files? What would be the purpose? One, we use them if we want to substitute a lecture. Yeah? So, the, 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 depending on your context in which you're teaching, you may have a student who may not be able to come physically to class. For example, we are now in the, the era of COVID and we, it's, not, it's not encouraged that we come face to face. So what then, do, what then can we do? We can have something, you can create an audio file now, like right now, I thought, okay, why don't I use a pre-recorded lecture? So it becomes a substitute rather than having the Zoom. It becomes a substitute. Even for us lecturers, we, we, when we discussed, when we talked about first using these pre-recorded lectures, we said it's, it's, it's expensive for students to constantly go on Zoom. So we can supplement, we can substitute the Zoom classes for a pre, with a pre-recorded lecture. So even an audio file can do the same. Two, use it when you want to supplement. Take note that when we use ICT, ICT doesn't take the lecturer or the teacher away. This, that the, the ICT simply is there to, in, to, to be an enabler, to support the teaching and learning process. So you don't take the teacher out. The teacher still remains central, 
but you can use it to supplement. The other is to be creative, yeah? So um, remember again, if I go back, when I thought about using this, if I go back to the lecture that we had, or rather the last session we had, where you, you, you particularly made a request that, can we also know how to use some of these ICTs to teach? So this was a, a creative way. I thought for me, this was a creative way for me to show you just what you can do, especially with PowerPoint. Our second uh, ICT technology is as the visual, visual technologies. So visual technologies appeal to the sense of sight. The previous one appeals to our sense of hearing. This one particularly appeals to sight. A typical example is PowerPoint. Yeah, a typical example, you have somebody talking, but PowerPoint comes in and gives you the visual, both of whatever it is, bit of the text or the graphs. Yeah. So the visual includes the speaker. So right now I'm speaking to you, but you can see me. Yes, and that does a lot. Many times when we, uh, we, when we are on Zoom, we take out our image, not because I don't want you to see me. Yeah, I may want you to see me, but we are looking at a bandwidth. We want to, to limit the consumption of the, the little bundles that we may have, what we're using to connect. So uh, we, you may not see me, but in something like this, I record myself and you actually see me. You may have models. Now, models or actual objects. Now, imagine you're teaching in a school which doesn't have a computer lab and you need to teach them what a CPU is, what a keyboard is. You may not have the, the physical CPU or keyboard, but you can have, you can get an image of a CPU and put it there on a PowerPoint slide and the students see it. Or even a video, you, YouTube has so many, so much learning content, so much freely available. You may go to YouTube and pick a video and then put it up, show your students. That's a, that, an example. Now, when would we use, just like audios, that, or the audio files had some principles behind them, when we can use them, when would we use visual technologies? When, number one, when we primarily want to gain the attention of the audience. The, one of the primary thing is that a, a picture will speak a thousand words. Two, we would also use it to illustrate something that is complex or it is difficult. It's a, a, it's a situation you may not be able to attain. For example, if you uh, like the example I gave you, you may not have um, an actual computer, but you can pick an image from somewhere or a video to show what a computer is, the different parts of a computer. But essentially, the picture is supposed to wow. That's the, the whole point of using visuals. Our third type of technology is that the audio-visual technologies. So these use both sight and hearing. Typically, what we are doing now, this is an audio-visual technology. Yeah? Uh, videos television. Now again, I want to point out, YouTube is a very good friend of education. Like all technologies, there are good things about uh, YouTube, there are bad things about it. But if you don't focus on the bad and you say, let me go on, I don't know how many things I have found on YouTube. Um, videos on practically anything. I remember my niece was doing IT. At, at the main campus. And the, the lecturer uh, was, there was a lecturer teaching them graphics and image processing. And he chose not to teach them how to use Photoshop. What he did was um, he gave them an assignment. You know, like you give someone an assignment, you say, get two videos, put them together, or get this image and do this, change it to this and that, manipulate it. And my nieces had went on YouTube 
My niece went on YouTube, downloaded a video on how to use Photoshop, and she did it. And all her classmates did the same. So even, even you, um, you may say, okay, today I'm not going to teach you. I'm not. Um, I'm, let me bring in. Let me bring in a get a video from YouTube which teaches a particular area of programming. Is somebody who is an expert who's going to take us through this. That is an example. Yeah. Or do something pre-recorded and allow that the student to go listen to it in their own free time. Now, use these videos to develop cognitive skills. Yeah, Showing someone, demonstrating how to do something. Or you want to dramatize it. Dramatizing it may, may give, um, 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 may give, bring more understanding into a, a situation. So here, we say an instructor can develop or use existing videos. So exactly what I was saying previously, okay? The final type of technology, ICT technology, is multimedia technology. Okay, this one combines all the technologies we've been talking about. The most uh, outright example would be e-learning platforms like Moodle, Google Classroom. Those are the most outright. They, you, in Moodle, you'll find texts, you'll find a video, you'll find everything uploaded there. You can have a discussion, you can have chats. In, in other words, it's a platform with an array of technologies which a teacher and students can use to support the, 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 the learning and the teaching and learning process. So here, the learner, all their senses are engaged in different ways. Now, let us not just look at this, at this, at uh, Moodle. I've just given an example of, 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 of using PowerPoint. Right now, I'm doing multiple things using PowerPoint. The only thing we can't do is chat on, on, on on this presentation but you can see me i can demonstrate something using just using the mouse and the, the different colors that we have here you know i can draw a line do whatever it is eh? just using powerpoint which we all have readily available as previously stated moodle wiki spaces uh, something like Moodle will provide for you an array of technologies. All of you have seen Moodle because you're all uh, users in Moodle. So I, I won't uh, give you an example of that now. But I'll give an example of a wiki space. This is um, an electronic learning environment which was created and it can be freely used by any teacher. As long as you're teaching, you can create a you can log in into Wikispaces. Here is an, is an example of a Wikispace where I went, logged in, and created uh, for my class. Eh? I had a, a class on ICT strategy for my master's. Mm -hmm. Then here I had a class for uh, master's, cl the, the, the master's class in um, for education. So I created this Wikispace and used it basically so it's freely available for anyone who is uh, an, anyone who's using it for educational purposes now just some important notes for you for you to 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 take note of one that ICT is an enabler it doesn't replace the instructor that's a key point you cannot use ICT there are times people have thrown it out there that, oh, um, now that technology is coming in, the classroom environment is going to be thrown out, the teacher is going to be useless, and so on and so forth. And for sure, many people learn so many things online. I remember during the lockdown, myself and my niece uh, decided, let's learn baking. And we went on YouTube, we learned it. And it's, it's, it's really good, but... You can't say we know everything about baking. Yes, certain things, for example, cake decoration, it, it's, a, it's another skill on its own. So you can't say uh, you're taking the instructor, the teacher out. The teacher is, is central. 
Yeah, the teacher is is uh, is central. Two. For you to be able to select, to use the technology appropriately, there must be a design process that must be followed. You must pick appropriate technology for the appropriate case situation you're in. The other is to state that less is more. And this will become clear when we go through our slide development class eh, session. Less is more. We can't bombard everyone with all the technologies. You don't want to overwhelm the student because the student, one, has to, first of all, pick your content, learn it, and pick up the skills. So you don't want at the same time to frustrate them using this technology, that technology, yet they're supposed to be learning programming. That's the core part of, of your teaching and learning process. So with that, I want to thank you for listening. Um, I'm going to put up a discussion forum on Moodle to allow us to discuss this further before our next lecture. And then I'm also going to give you a second assigned group assignment based on this. So you, you can continue working in the groups you, you worked in. I think you did a good job, all of you. Thank you for that again. Uh, we are going to build on those group that group assignment using this content. So I thank you for listening. Let us meet in the virtual classroom in the uh, coming week.